Hello everyone, welcome to today's video and today we will be understanding RAS, RAF, MEK, ERK pathway and in this one we will be learning about RAS activation, RAF activation and MEK activation. At the same time we will also understand how ERK activation works and how that gets translated into nuclear translocation or expression of various genes. We will also understand regulation and feedback mechanisms. Before we dive into the main content, a huge shout out to our sponsors, Consensus, for supporting the channel so that we can bring amazing content to you. If you want to access the premium pack of Consensus, you can use the discount code available in the description box. And for those who are not familiar with Consensus, here is a quick snapshot of what Consensus is. Meet Consensus, the intelligent way to search for scientific research. Type in a question and let Consensus instantly sort and summarize trusted research findings all in one place. No more endless scrolling with consensus. You find what you need fast, clear, and verified. Compare studies effortlessly. Consensus allows you to analyze research from various sources side by side, helping you to make informed decisions quickly. Personalize your research experience. Create profiles that save your preferences, making it easier to access your most relevant topics. Collaborate seamlessly. Share your findings with colleagues and collaborate in real time, ensuring everyone is on the same page. Get consensus today and simplify your research journey. Hello everyone, in this video we will be understanding RAS, RAF, MEK, ERK pathway. Let's start with the introduction to the MAP kinase pathway. The RAS, RAF, MAC, ERK signaling pathway, this is, the, this is the full name, in short, it's also known as MAP kinase pathway, is one of the most fundamental cascade in cellular biology, playing a central role in transducing signals from cell surface to the nucleus. Means this pathway is involved in sending signals from the extracellular environment to the nucleus. This pathway organizes processes such as cell proliferation, differentiation, survival, as well as stress responses. Its dysregulation is commonly linked to cancer and other diseases, making it a crucial or critical target for therapeutic interventions. So in general, this pathway is really important. It's one of the central pathway which cell uses for various processes like cell proliferation, differentiation, survival mechanisms and if there is any dysregulation in this particular pathway that may lead to various diseases including cancer. Okay, now let's talk about RAS activation which is the first step in, the, uh, in this particular pathway. RAS, a small GTPase, acts as an upstream switch for the MAP kinase pathway. RAS molecule, this is a GTPase molecule that is the switch for the activation of this particular pathway. When a receptor tyrosine kinases, which are also known as RTKs, they are activated by ligands such as growth factors, hormones and, and cytokines. What this means is, you have receptors that are present on the cell surface, they are known as receptor tyrosine kinases. In short, they are known as RTKs. They are activated by various ligand molecules. Here we have just mentioned that ligands can be growth factors, hormones as well as cytokines. When the ligand is going to bind to these RTKs, it will undergo autophosphorylation. And because of that, it will create docking sites for adapter proteins. And what are those adapter proteins? They are GRB2 and SOS. Now, specifically, SOS facilitates the exchange of GDP for GDP on RAS, converting it into its active state. Now, the RAS is activated. Now, the activated RAS then interacts with RAF and also recruit RAF to the plasma membrane, initiating the next step in the signaling cascade. So, what will happen? You have activated RAS. RAS is going to further interact with RAF and RAF will further will be recruited to the plasma membrane and this will cause the downstream signaling pathway. And what are those different steps? We'll discuss in the, in the next section. Now, let's talk about RAF activation. RAF, it's a serine threonine kinase that becomes activated upon binding to the RAS GDP. So, RAS GDP that we have discussed in the previous section also, it's going to activate the RAF protein. And, and you have multiple RAF isoforms. You have A RAF, B RAF, and C RAF. There are three different RAF proteins that are important in the signaling pathway. Particularly, B RAF is significant highly significant due to its frequent mutations in cancers such as melanoma and other cancers. So in these cancers and other cancers also, it has been found that this particular protein BRAF is mutated and those mutations they are contributing towards these cancers. 
So activated RAF phosphorylates further MEK, triggering its activation. So activated RAF will further activate the MEK protein and that will further amplify the signal and also primes the pathway for further progression. So you can understand how, how the process is happening. You have RAF activation that will happen because of the RAS GDP. And in particular, you have three different isoforms and BRAF is very, very important in case of cancers and that activated RAF phosphorylate the MEK triggering its activation and that will further amplify the signal. Now let's talk about activation of MEK. Okay, the next step is MEK activation. MEK1 and MEK2 are dual specificity kinases that phosphorylates ERK specifically on threonine and tyrosine residues. So now what will happen? You have MEK1 and MEK2. They are dual specificity kinases that they are able to phosphorylate ERK proteins, specifically on theorin and tyrosine residues. MEK activation represents a critical amplification point. So this particular point is really, really important. This is a critical point. This will ensure the precise and robust transmission of the signal. So you can consider it as a, it's a very important checkpoint. Once activated, MEK phosphorylates ERK, that is what we, we understood, and moving the pathway forward to its downstream effects. So you can understand what is happening. Now you have MEK activation and MEK will cause the activation of ERK. And this particular step is highly, highly important. MEK activation, MEK activation is really important, critical in further progression of this particular pathway. And now because MEK is activated, it also phosphorylates ERK and that will activate the downstream effect. All right, moving further, you have ERK activation and nuclear translocation. So now the, the final signaling activation will happen and then the activated protein will move to the nucleus. ERK1 and ERK2, the final kinases in this particular cascade, they become activated by MEK mediated phosphorylation. So that is what we also understood, right? MEK will get activated, it will further activate ERK and in ERK, you have ERK1 and ERK2. These are going to get phosphorylated. And once they are phosphorylated, ERK will be translocated to the nucleus. And inside the nucleus, ERK phosphorylates a variety of transcription factors, such as CFOS, CMIC, and ELK1. These are transcription factors, and they are able to start the expression of various genes. And they regulate the gene expression to drive cellular responses, like cell proliferation, cell differentiation, and also stress adaptation. It is very, very important to note that ERK can also exert its effect in the cytoplasm by phosphorylating cytoplasmic targets. So what it means that it can translocate to the nucleus and activate the transcription factors over there that will cause the expression of genes that are responsible for various cellular signaling pathway, but it can also phosphorylate or activate uh, the proteins that are present in the cytoplasm and that can further exert the effect on various proteins and there are so many proteins in the in the cell and a lot of signaling pathways are there and still we are not aware of their connection fully and we are not aware how they work specifically specifically considering the the diseases specifically considering the situation where cell is undergoing stress all right let's understand what are the further steps in this pathway All right, let's understand regulation and feedback mechanisms. The MAP kinase pathway is tightly regulated to ensure proper signal intensity and duration. It's very, very important for this particular pathway to control itself, to control all the molecules and ensure the regulation of all those genes as well as the activation of transcription factors. It's highly controlled. A negative feedback loop such as ERK mediated phosphorylation of SOS, it can attenuate RAS activation. So there is a negative feedback mechanism that can attenuate the RAS activation. Scaffold proteins like KSR, it also help organize pathways or components of the pathways to enhance signaling specificity and efficiency. Dual specificity phosphatases, also known as DUSPs, they dephosphorylate ERK and that can serve as another layer, layer of control to terminate the signal. So this is how it can basically suppress the signal and control the signal and nothing is going out of control. So there are mechanisms that can control this entire pathway. All right, let's conclude this. The RAS, RAF, MEK, ERK pathway exemplifies the elegance of cellular signaling network. When cell activation ensures signal fidelity as well as specificity. Its central role in cellular regulation highlights its importance in health as well as in disease.
continuous research into this pathway is essential for advancing targeted cancer therapies as well as understanding fundamental cell biology. Lot of work is required to identify various signaling pathways, specifically various molecules that are involved in this particular pathway so we can develop new therapeutics against diseases like cancer. All right, that was all. I hope the video was helpful for you to understand RAS, RAF, MEK, ERK pathway, in short, MAP kinase pathway. And you were able to understand the sequential steps that are involved in activation of various molecules and what is the feedback mechanism as well as the regulation in this particular pathway. I'll meet you in the next video where we will discuss the similar pathways. And if you have any doubt, any questions you have, please post your questions in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer those. Thank you so much.